In this Terraria playthrough, every time I die in any way, the spawn rate will increase, making the game more of a challenge with every death. This makes for some insane scenarios that test my dodging skills to the max. How far can I get, and is it even possible to finish the game with such extremes? Let us see. Starting off, when creating my character and world, I wanted to ensure this challenge was actually possible, so we will be playing on the classic difficulty. Although this sounds easy, the sheer number of enemies make up for this. Let's just say that a master mode 30 times spawn rate solar pillar is pretty much impossible. Jumping into my new world, the very start of this playthrough was typical to any other. I destroyed the local forest and built a house where a random man stood there. I then delved underground to see what I could find, first stumbling on this beautiful radar and soon later a minecart track which led me to an underground desert. Unsurprisingly, this is where I nearly had my first death, as I couldn't see a damn thing. Just when I thought I was all in the clear and became victim to a dart trap, in all the panic and hysteria, for some reason, I was blind to my potions and, well, went for the recall instead, resulting in my first death. Yeah, I have no idea what I was thinking. Luckily, this didn't mean the end for me, as the two times spawn rate wasn't that noticeable at first, still giving me the chance to mine resources underground. I found a boatload of silver and got myself some upgrades. As I will be dealing with a large amount of enemies pretty soon, I decided to craft platinum bow which would help me deal with large groups of enemies from a distance. With my new gear, I felt confident in venturing back underground and managed to stumble across a gold chest with a magic mirror. This would be useful for infinite getaways. But then, out of nowhere, I managed to dig myself into a massive cavern. Powerless, this once again resulted in my death, and just like that, the spawn rate was now up to three times. At this point, I really needed to make some progress, so I used the increased spawn rate to my advantage to get myself a shackle and as much gold as I could. When things got a little overwhelmed on the surface, I once again headed underground to see if I could find anything of use. I found myself in the underground jungle, which although hostile, can have some pretty good loot, like this cloud in a bottle. Straight after collecting this, all the jungle spawns caught up with me and gave me an absolute pummeling. Luckily, I was quick enough on the magic mirror to escape with these, leaving me on only 2 HP. After this close encounter, I wanted to get myself some better weapons and armor without risking my life, so I headed to the corruption to smash some orbs. Although the spawn rate was crazy high here, eaters were pretty easy to take out with the bow. Now that I had obtained the musket, I felt pretty confident in taking out some bosses, so I set up a sizable arena and fought the Eye of Cthulhu that night. To be honest, I forgot how easy normal mode Eye of Cthulhu is. It is one of the most chill fights so far. I even did a couple to get myself enough demonite to last. After this success, I figured I would easily be able to take out the Eater of Wilds. So, I tried to set up an arena which was a right pain to build due to the amount of Eaters attacking me. This will become a common occurrence during this playthrough. <laughs> With all the setup done, I headed down to smash my third shadow orb, and let's just say the start of this fight wasn't exactly smooth. I honestly don't think I could have messed it up much more. The rest of this fight was alright until I got swarmed by about 20,000 eaters. It got to the point where I couldn't even focus on the boss due to the amount of things swarming me. This unfortunately resulted in my third death. This was quite a big deal. Five times spawning it was no joke. To continue, I really needed just to become a tank as there wasn't really much chance of me dodging enemies anymore. So I headed back underground to collect as many items and life crystals as possible. One of the locations I stumbled upon was this underground mushroom biome, which was full to the brim with goodies, along with an absolute onslaught of enemies protecting it. My plan was to build a platform I could easily drop from and grapple back up to. Although dangerous, this actually worked, and I always had a recall potion for a quick escape. With my new upgrades, I rematched the Eater of Wilds with far more success than my previous attempt. This is partly due to my high HP and defense, and a satisfying yet strategic use of Jester Arrows, which could pierce the boss's body if angled correctly. The Eater of Wilds was soon defeated. After this, I crafted a set of Shadow Armor, which actually didn't increase my defense due to the ancient Shadow Armor I'd already obtained from all these Eaters. But then, this set of armor was quickly made redundant when a meteorite crashed down into my world. Excited to go mine it all up, I bought myself a mini shark from the arms dealer, which I figured would help me fend off the storm of meteor heads I expected to see there. And it did to an extent, but my god there were a lot more than I expected. 
Mining this thing was one of the most annoying experiences in this playthrough so far. Having to pretty much mine a tile or two, shoot and repeat. Although, after obtaining the Meteor Head Banner, it did become a lot easier, but still took me forever. With night quickly approaching, I crafted myself a space gun and a set of Meteor Armor to take out Skeletron with, and wow, that 5 times spawn it was getting pretty difficult, almost resulting in my 4th death before I'd even summoned the thing. Oh, and building this arena was about as fun as you'd expect, taking me well into the night. It was only when I found a small pocket of 14 enemies nearby that I could talk to the old man and summon him in. This fight was actually dead easy despite the unbelievable amount of other spawns flooding me. At this point, the 30 or so defense I had just made most things deal barely any damage. I'm honestly not sure if this would be realistically doable on expert mode. With Skeletron swiftly dealt with, I headed into the dungeon to try and obtain two items in particular, a cobalt shield to prevent knockback and a handgun to craft a phoenix blaster later with. The knockback resistance would be a massive help as many of my close calls are usually created by being knocked into a hole or simply being bullied around by multiple enemies. And as for the handgun upgrade, the phoenix blaster is a fantastic option against the wall of flesh. This would be my weapon of choice unless I find something better on the way. The dungeon was hard. Not only did the stuff get a lot harder, but the water candles made the spawn rate even more ridiculous than it already was. My best friend was the recall versions, keeping me alive in many life-threatening scenarios. Also, annoyingly my luck with chests was abysmal. I must have spent at least an hour trying to obtain a handgun. Eventually I managed to get it without even dying once, keeping my spawn rate intact for the wall of flesh fight. Speaking of the wall of flesh, I felt pretty ready. So I dug a elevator, got myself situated, and drank an obsidian skin and got myself some final hellstone upgrades. It was actually pretty peaceful to be submerged in lava far beneath the onslaught of enemies. I needed to mine enough hellstone to be able to craft a full set of molten armor and of course the phoenix blaster. This would hopefully give me enough defense to survive the wall of flesh fight no problem. With my obsidian skin running out, I headed back to the surface. This was when I completely underestimated the power of the hell enemies and suddenly realized how low my health was. In realization, I reached from the magic mirror, but just wasn't quick enough. This was bad. The spawn rate had increased to 10 times and I still hadn't built a hell bridge. This next process was somehow even worse than the Skeletron Arena. Building in hell with 8 million enemies is like being in hell. After stretching the bridge as far as my brain cells would take, I was ready to fight the wall of flesh. Let's see if we can do this. But wait, that would be far too much excitement in one episode. So we're going to end it here. Let me know if you guys want to see a part two of this series and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you do. I'll see you in the next one.